Filmmaker Gary J. Tonicliffe, the writer and director of Hellraiser Judgment, as well as special makeup effects artist Extraordinaire, has, as regular watchers of Midnight's Edge know, teased that he is working on a new original horror project. Today, Gary is here, with myself and co-host Tom Connors, to formally announce his new movie. Hellraiser Judgment director Gary J. Tonicliffe will reunite with Pinhead actor Paul T. Taylor for Cholerophobia, the mother of all scary clown movies. Now, I know that you probably can't say a lot at this early stage, but tell us, what can you share about Cholerophobia, which for those of us a bit rusty in ancient Greek, means fear of clowns? Yes, uh, what can I tell you? Uh, yes, reunited with Paul T. Taylor, and it feels so good. Chorophobia. Our intention is basically to do for clown movies what Jaws did for sharks. So the idea is to take the original Evil Dead, uh, The Hills of Eyes, Wrong Turn, those kind of movies, Cabin in the Woods, throw it into a blender with the weirdest, creepiest parts of Hellraiser Judgment and the Stygian Inquisition, and times it by a thousand, and that will hopefully be Chorophobia, and hopefully will give you a fear of clowns. Now, as Andre said, you'll be working with Paul T. Taylor again, who you, of course, worked with on Hellraiser Judgment, where he played Pinhead. Tell us what made you cast him as the ultimate killer clown and what kind of influences your work on Hellraiser will have on this movie. Uh, I'll take that question the two parts. Answer the first part second. No, no, no. Uh, how, did, uh, how did I reunite with Paul T. Taylor for this project? Paul T. Taylor got me the job. He'd worked with the producer John Paul Burkhart before, and I think they were discussing lovely directors to work with who are also very creepy and scary as well. And, and Paul Taylor recommended me, and I, I met with JP, and we had a great meeting. And uh, here we are now, uh, several months later, working on the script and uh, working on Chorophobia. So I owe Paul T. Taylor 10% of my final fee, and he should be my agent. So there's a note to directors. Be nice to your lead actors and take care of them and be wonderful, uh, you know, uh, helpful directors, and hopefully they will get you a gig in the future. So um, thank you, Paul T. Taylor. But also, to be honest, I, I would have cast him anyway, uh, you know, um, and the role that he's playing is not the eloquent, sophisticated, regal terror that is the hell priest. This is a cold, black-hearted, insidious killer in the guise of a clown, an ancient clown. So, um, yeah, uh, we've already had several discussions about how we all play the character and uh, influences and stuff like that, and it's great fun. Regarding Hellraiser and the influences, I think having been in love with the Hellraiser franchise for so long and obviously worked on it, I think it infuses everything I do. You know, my, my tenure there uh, infuses everything I think about and the grotesquery of Clive Barker's work. So um, you could probably easily take sequences in Chorophobia, and if you were to replace the clans with Cenobites, it would work. There are a quartet of clowns in this film, uh, all designed to be very different and iconic and have their own particular um, manifestation of evil and the look. Um, so there is a, a mirror there. And then really just going about that kind of beautiful grotesquery that Clive did so well in the original Hellraiser. So yes, that's how I am influenced by uh, Hellraiser and definitely will flow from me into Chorophobia. Now, outside of yourself as director, and of course Paul T. Taylor as uh, the lead killer clown, who else is involved with making the movie? The production team is um, Delco Productions, David Gunning, and 910 Films, John Paul Burkhart, and Larissa Garcia Garb. And then the script was a Barb, sorry, and the original script was written by uh, John Paul Burkhart. And then me, myself, and Larissa, and uh, JP have been working on the script, and we're actually working on it right now. Uh, crafting it to be, uh, you know, a roller coaster ride of evil, terror, and grotesquery. Now, going back to the core concept, you said it would be the mother of all scary clown movies. Okay. Now, in recent years, we've had a lot of the whole scary clown business in the news. We've had movies like It and Joker, even Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, how do you plan on differentiating yourself from those type of films of killer clowns and scary clowns? Yeah, it's, it's weird you mentioned Joker. I don't really think of Joker as being like a killer clown movie. I mean, I know he's killed people and he's a clown, so technically he's a killer clown, but I consider that to be, you know, high budget fare with a 
the birth of a superhero and clearly the next joker movie will see him you know in the world of batman and everything else so that is so far away from what we're doing with this film uh, and with pennywise and it again a literary classic with uh, stephen king's book and again really dealing with kind of the the kids emotions and the kind of like the, the situation with pennywise there and the fear being personified by a clown whereas this is really in the world of that classic kind of horror film uh you know cabin in the woods you know wrong turn the hills have eyes evil dead so it's that's why i kind of consider it to be the mother of all those hopefully um you know in the same way that you you know if you're a, a director and you're doing a car chase you say hey we, we need to watch bullet and ronin and if you're doing a shootout you're like let's watch heat the you know my agenda is that if you anyone who makes a killer clan uh, you know an evil clan movie in the future uh, you know their first reaction is oh we should check out that that, that chorophobia movie that they, they did it right and uh managed to make it very intense and scary uh, i mean i think clowns are pretty scary anyway but the sequences that we've written into this film are incredibly bold and incredibly horrific even by hellraiser judgment standards so if you were freaked out by anything in Hellraiser judgment then you're going to have your mind blown with chorophobia now you mentioned that uh, clowns are scary anyway and that's an opinion that many share however in conjunction with the release of both it and the joker than real-life clowns, you know, the ones providing entertainment at children's parties and such, were complaining that these movies were bad for their business. Have you given any thought to how they will react to your movie, which promises to do for clowns what Jaws did for sharks? I have, Andre. I've given a lot of thought. It keeps, keeps me awake at night, actually. You know, I, I worry about these people and I worry about their they're living and how they're going to earn money and um you know it bothers me um but but fuck them basically <laughs> so i'm sorry but you know uh you know you picked a strange career to have and uh, i'm sorry but i've been freaked out with clowns since i was a kid so you know i've always found them scary do children really like having clowns come to their house i mean and it's not just me i mean it's not even just in recent years if you go back and look at victorian clowns which i have and we'll probably use the influence of the victorian clown on uh, one at least one of our characters they were genuinely terrifying. I mean, really freaky. And then I remember being a kid and watching, well, not a kid, but a teenager, and watching David Bowie in the Ashes to Ashes video and thinking he looked really, really weird and creepy. And then, you know, from watching Charlie Caroli as a child to David Bowie to anything really with clowns, I would have been utterly horrified if my parents would have ever had a clown turn up at my house. And having worked at Fright Down for many years in Las Vegas, where you know we yearly we had six mazes and i would try and help design five other ones that were weird and scary and creepy with new characters that we created we every year the clown maze was undoubtedly the, the fan favorite to the point where in the end we did a little work on it it was like oh look you know we'll just have a, a room we'll paint it black on the inside put some ultraviolet lights in there and fill it full of creepy clowns and people were still voting at the number one maze at the event and we had clowns in there that weren't even creepy we had happy looking fluffy clowns holding balloons smiling and people found those more terrifying than the evil clowns we had so i i feel sorry for you but look take the makeup off and then just be a juggler or a balloon bender and you don't need to wear the creepy clown stuff um and i'm sorry that i'm shitting all over the legacy of clowns and the the history of them and all that but it's like punch and judy i've found punch and judy really weird and creepy as well so punch and judy clowns creepy jack in the boxes it's all in the same world so i apologize but what, what do people say sorry not sorry so sorry not sorry clown <laughs> performance well that sounds like a lot of fun and i can't wait to check it out and we can't wait to hear more from you about chloro Chlor god damn it don't worry, you're not the only one who has problems with that word, Tom. Chorophobia Chlor is the tricky Chorophobia. One. But it's one of those words, I hope that it's one of those things that you hear the first time and you don't know how to say it, but why, you know, and yes, very tricky. Trust me, I'm writing the script and I still spell it wrong all the time. So with that, we can't wait to check in with you again later to hear more about Chorophobia and uh, your updates on when the film will be coming out and who possibly you'll be working with on the, on the movie and all that other good stuff. So until then... Thanks for joining us, Gary, and we hope to hear more from you soon. Thank you very much. I'll look forward to keeping you guys updated with casting and everything else as we go into production. Awesome.